What's up? It's your boy Tariq Ali and welcome back to your boy's channel. How you doing today? You doing good? I hope you're doing good. You look great. Yes, I can see you. Don't look around. I see you. Yes, and you look great. You look beautiful. Today we're going to be talking about finances. Yup, everybody's favorite topic. Yeah, except we can focus on mine. So I guess it's easier here for you. Firstly, I want to say thank you to Visible for sponsoring this video um, and allowing me to come here to talk to my people about finances, girl. Yes, money. We love to talk about it. Yes, we do. Secondly, I just showed you guys how I bought my Tesla in my last video, you know, my dream car, and I named her Angelica. Um, and you know, YouTubers do this all the time. They buy these nice cars, um, but they don't explain to us how they pay for them. I mean, clearly the views, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, yes. But like, they never really have like a transparent conversation about finances and like helping the people that actually help them get it. You guys? So instead of just doing it with one video where I just talk about the car and how I pay for the car, I was like, you know, let's do this on a consistent basis where we actually talk about finances and things that affect our finances and making smart decisions about it. So I'm gonna create this new series on my channel, and this is the first one, I guess, um, where we talk about finances and we talk about credit and we talk about all of those things that have to do with money and adulting. But in this video in specific, we're gonna be talking about all of those new bills that came rushing towards me when I became an adult um, and how I managed them and how I came to making smart decisions decisions about them, especially the recurring expenses like the bills that you have to pay monthly. I'm about to go make my drink and then we can get the video started and we can start talking about money. My money. Yeah, I know y'all like to talk about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's get right into it, y'all. Today we're drinking Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, so look, today we're talking about finances, we're talking about adulting. Okay, this, this is the, okay. Uh, yeah, this is the last of it. Okay, get me through this video. Okay, listen, adulting is ghetto. We all know this. It's very ghetto. Okay, let's talk about all the bills I incurred once I graduated, okay? Just a, just a few, just a few. Rent, car payment, car insurance, electric bill, Wi-Fi, phone bill, groceries, because you got to eat, um, sewage and trash to the building and to the city. Yes, they're separate bills. Yes, absolutely. Renter's insurance, dental insurance, Health insurance. Yes, health insurance. I know some of y'all are looking at me crazy like, boy, ain't you 22? Yes, I am, but remember my aunt and uncle took me in and my aunt, we were under her plan and she's in the military. And if you're in the military and you have TRICARE, they drop you at 21 unless you're in school. And so since I graduated this year and I'm 22, they kicked me off that health insurance. Girl, I gotta get my own health insurance. Oh, I gotta get my health insurance. This is so ghetto. And yes, those are a lot of bills, I know, but today I just wanna focus on my thought process when it comes to these bills. I'm gonna share with you guys the kind of questions that I ask myself and the people that I'm consulting or the people that I'm gonna buy from so that you guys can start asking those same questions and so you can start thinking critically when it comes to making decisions with your money as well. First, we're gonna start with a small bill and then we're gonna go to a larger bill, um, which is my Tesla and my car and everything like that. So the first thing is a small bill, like one of those small bills that came to me after I graduated that I didn't think I would have to be paying is my phone bill. I know the phone bill is like that one bill that we all think our parent is gonna pay for the rest of our lives. Like they've been paying it all our lives since middle school and we just like, I'm 23, I am not paying that bill, mom. You better keep paying that bill. Like it ain't hurting you, it ain't hurt you for the last 10 years, why can't you just keep paying the bill? But girl, at some point you're gonna have to pay your own phone bill. So when that time finally did come for me and I did have to pay my own phone bill, I was like looking at all the different services, you know, like T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon. And I was just like comparing all of these different prices and seeing like what made the most sense for me. And that's actually this year is when Visible reached out to me and they shared with me their plan and I thought it was too good to be true. But Visible is this new phone service that's under Verizon's 4G LTE network. And it's only $40 for unlimited everything. I'm talking data, messaging, hotspot as well. And already out the gate, that's cheap. Like if you look at all these other services, they charge you extra when it comes to like Wi-Fi and hotspot and how much data and unlimited and everything like that. Um, and Visible just has a whole package just for $40 a month. The part where really got me was that they have this thing called the party pay plan. Um, and it starts at $40, but if you add someone to your party plan, like it becomes a party, like you invite somebody to your party, then it takes off $5 of your monthly payment for you and the person that you bring on. So if you was paying 40, you bring somebody on, then you pay 35 and they pay 35. And then if you bring on another person, you can take down another five. So it goes down to 30 for three people for all of y'all is 30. Um, and it can keep going until like 25 because I think the max is like four people. Um, but like, this is like a super deal because like everybody my age, like we're starting to get kicked out of the nest at the same time. We're graduating college at the same time. We're becoming adults at the same time. So it's like, we're all eventually gonna have to pay our own bill and it just makes sense for us to all be on the same plan and paying like what, only $25 each for unlimited everything. But what I like about it the most is like, we don't have to share an account. Like we can pay 
separately and I don't have to worry about you paying me. I don't have to go in your account, see if you pay the bill. I don't have to try to call somebody and my phone not working because you didn't pay your bill but I paid my part and he paid his part. Two of y'all didn't pay y'all part. I don't have to worry about that. And that's what I really love about Visible. See, this is my thought process when it comes to like bills or making like money decisions is like, I wanna make sure that I'm getting something of quality. Like I said, I like nice things. And that's just not like material, like what this is made of, but like quality, like is the service good? Like if it is a phone service, does my calls not drop? Can I stream my videos? And when I call customer service, are they rude? Do they refund? Do they like, you know, all of that but also for a good deal because you can get a lot of quality things for expensive amounts of money. Like there's a lot of things that you could buy for expensive amounts, but it's like, am I getting good service and good quality? And also, is it a deal attached? And it's like, if you do find another option with good service or good quality, you compare the two, like which one can I spend less on? Like sometimes it's good to just treat yourself and sometimes a deal doesn't have to be incorporated all of the time when you're just enjoying yourself. Like a one-time purchase, you don't, like a deal isn't necessary, it's nice, we like a 30% off, but with things that are recurring, like a monthly bill, like your phone bill, or your car payment, or your insurance, you wanna make sure that you're comparing all of these decisions that you're making because you wanna make sure that at the end of the day you're saving money because it's going to constantly come out of your account so that's pretty much the pr thought process that went into like my phone service thing was like there's a lot of different services that I can pick but like which one is giving me the best deal okay so that was a small bill now on to the big bill which is my Tesla that I think everybody wants to talk about here okay so let me just give you a little background when it comes to um, cars and everything like that in college I went to college downtown Atlanta Georgia State University and I lived downtown Atlanta I literally walked from my dorm to the library, like I was right on campus, it was right there. Um, and I spent most of my time in the library or in class or at home. I didn't really go many places, like I was a bio major, I didn't have time to be doing all that extra stuff, I really didn't, I'm sorry. Um, so I really just didn't need a car during the year. So um, I only really needed a car on the weekends, like if I was to go out. But to be honest, on my free time, I just did YouTube most of the times and I filmed in my apartment or in my dorm. So it just really didn't make sense for me to have a car. Did I, would it be nice to have a car? Yes, because I could have went wherever I wanted to go um, whenever I wanted to go. Like, of course there was places outside of my school that I went, but I just Ubered. Um, but when it came to that decision, I was like, I would spend more money and waste way more money if I got a car because it would just be sitting in the garage or sitting in the parking lot when I'm not using it and I'm in school Monday through Friday. Um, instead of just paying those Ubers, I would be saving way more money doing Ubers rather than paying for a car that's gonna sit in the garage. Like, I could have afforded a car. It wasn't that I couldn't afford a car, it was just that it just didn't make sense to buy one or to rent one or lease one. It just didn't make sense. So, the money that I would spend on a car if I had got a car, I would take that money from my account every month and put it into savings for when I graduated or for when I actually needed a car. Like for example, when the school year was over, the summer was there. So I wasn't in school anymore, but I was still like in Atlanta. So I decided to use the FAIR app. I told you guys this in the Tesla video that I used the FAIR app to um, lease a car. Why I like the FAIR app is because you can lease a car by month, um, meaning that it's really like a subscription-based car service type of thing. Like, we all know Turo, and we all know, like, Zipcar, but that's, like, for a couple of days or for a couple of hours. But FAIR is literally, like, leasing a car, and you can turn it in whenever you want to. The money that I saved during the year when I could have had a car and paid for a car and I saved to the side, I used that money. So I had so much money left over in my savings for a car um, after just leasing for, like, three months. Doing it this way also made a lot of sense because... Back then, in 2018 and 2019, I was I was doing good on YouTube, but I wasn't making like that much. Like I wasn't making that much to where I could be living how I'm living now. Um, so my income was like very inconsistent, and there were some months that I didn't upload. Like if I had an orgo test or a biochem test, or like it just depending on what month it is in the year, the school year. I would not upload or I wouldn't film because I'm in the library spending all of my time studying. So it was like I only posted when I had time. I wasn't like doing YouTube full time. So my income was very inconsistent. And I didn't want to do a two year lease um, and then out of nowhere my YouTube isn't doing well or I'm not making money and then I can't afford to pay it monthly but I can't get out of the contract because it's two years. What I liked about FAIR was that I could just 
pay for it every month and then whatever I was done with it and I wanted to turn it in, I could turn it in um, because my income was so inconsistent. So in conclusion, it didn't make sense to me to make a long-term decision with money knowing that I didn't already have that money in my bank or I didn't have that money readily available to me. Now yes, you can make long-term decisions and say, oh, I'm gonna hustle, I'm gonna hustle, I'm gonna make money, we're gonna wake up and grind, we're gonna do this. I don't like to live like that, okay? I don't like to live in a way that like, what we, how are we making money today? How are we going to pay for this today? I don't like doing that. I like to make long-term decisions financially knowing that I will be able to pay them. <laughs> like, I don't want any stress being involved in that. I don't want to wake up on a Monday thinking, how am I going to make $300 today? I don't think that's cute for me. I don't like doing that. So that is my thought process. Okay, so that was my car decision when I was in Atlanta and when I was a college student. Now, I graduated in May this year, 2020, and I moved to LA. Now, I knew I needed a car in LA. Everybody knows you need a car in LA. Um, but I was just coming into being a full-time YouTuber. Like I said, I only did videos sporadically here and there. This was, my, this was gonna be my first time doing videos like every week or doing Instagram posts every week and actually getting a team, a manager, an agent like this was my first time into this career if you asked me what my yearly salary was I would not be able to tell you if you ask me how much money I make a month I cannot be able to tell you because some months I would make 5,000 some months I would make 2,000 some months I make 8,000 sometimes I wouldn't make anything well it wouldn't be anything but it would be really low um, so it's like it was so sporadic so I didn't really know what my finances was really saying like my w-2s looked my tax returns looked different every single year um, so I had no consistency and it didn't really make sense to me to make long-term decisions not knowing those type of things how much money do you make what is coming in so you know what's going to go out you can't make de all these decisions on what's going out of you not knowing what's coming inside of you Ooh, that sounded sexual but I didn't mean it in that way okay I'm just saying you can't make decisions on money that isn't there and that you haven't seen come consistently before so I knew coming to LA I needed a car but I didn't want to make a long-term decision without knowing how much money I had now I did make one long-term decision and that was this apartment but that was on the faith of God <laughs> and also knowing that I I, I was making good money where I, I could afford this apartment when I got it. Like I knew I was going to be able to pay it. I just didn't know how much money I could add on to what I had already established. So the apartment, this was what I established just as solid. I signed a one year lease. What can I add on to that onto my budget? And I didn't know yet. I wanted to have a couple of months first where I was doing YouTube consistently and I was making money so that I can make a decision with my money. That I can make a decision on that pot. Um, so pretty much, just like before, I did fair again because this is a very, sh this is a monthly commitment, okay? It's only a month. I just need to know in this next month you can pay me this much and that's good. So I went and got a car that, had, that was a monthly lease um, so that I could see how much money I was going to make over the couple of months before I made a long-term decision. Um, and a lot of people say you could have just got a Honda and got like bought a Honda or like leased a Honda for two years. But I wanted to make sure whatever car I got was a car that I wanted to keep um, for two years, first of all, or even seven years. It was just I wanted to make sure it was something I actually wanted. So I just got a temporary car and instead of renting, it's cheaper to use fare or to do a monthly subscription type of service. So the car payment for um, the Ford Focus was $286.65 and the insurance for that Ford Focus was $253.99. Um, and the gas in LA is four, usually $4 a gallon on average, like, and a Ford Focus takes 12.5 gallons. So that means $50 to fill a tank, okay? And I did it about twice a month, and that was me working from home. Like, I film from home. I don't really go many places unless I'm hiking, eating. But I don't go many places, okay? Because I don't go back and forth to a job. Um, so I filled up my tank about twice a month, and so that's $100. So in total, with the car payment, the insurance, and the gas, it was about $640 a month that I was paying for a car just monthly I didn't own my name wasn't even on it um, and this is a waste of money that's a lot of money to be spending on a car that you don't own or do you you don't know if you're gonna have in four months so this got me thinking like what kind of car do I want to buy or lease like what kind of car do I want to make a long-term uh, commitment with um, and so I started thinking about Tesla of course because that is my dream car everybody knows this is my dream car I love Tesla's 
Um, and I just wanted to see, I just wanted to see. I've been seeing for years. I've been like researching Teslas for years. But anyways, um, what are the benefits of a Tesla? Like there has to be benefits. Like I said, when it comes to any decisions that are recurring with your bills, you wanna make sure that you're getting quality but with a deal. So I was like, what are the benefits? What is the deal? The benefit of a Tesla is like there's no crazy maintenance. Like, you know, with gas cars, you got oil problems. You got the engines messing up. It's hot, the fan, this and that. The Tesla is just a battery, bitch. It's just a battery. Like, you will not hear about Teslas, like, breaking down. Like, if you do, it's very, very rare, but it can happen. But you don't have people, like, you know how people be like, my car in the shop. That don't usually happen with Teslas, girl. Unless it's your tires, your windows, or something like that, girl. The maintenance is very, very low with Teslas, and that's a benefit. The gas savings. Um, the average is 13 cents per kilowatts an hour, and I know that don't mean a lot to people. It don't mean a lot to me either. Um, but pretty much, it's $11.47 uh, to fill up a, a long-range Tesla Model 3, which is the one I got. So $11 to fill up your tank rather than a gas car, which would cost like $50. Another benefit, I'm saving a lot of money with fueling my car. Even though it's not actual oil or fuel, it's like just energy, electricity, but you get what I'm saying. And the third benefit is that you're decreasing your carbon footprint. There's more benefits after this, but this is just like at the basis of like a Tesla, like an electric car, what are the benefits with that? Um, and I didn't like any of the electric cars. The other ones, I don't like them, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just don't like them. It was Tesla or nothing, okay? So I checked out Tesla and I didn't want a big car. Like, I like sedans, so I didn't want the Model X. Um, and I didn't want the Model S because it was too long and they're just too expensive, girl. That's $100,000. I'm not spending $100,000 for a car. You guys mind if I turn on the lights? Okay, yeah, cause it's getting a little dark. Ciao, but I'm not ending this video. We are talking, we are getting into it. Okay, what was I saying? Hold on. Mm. So I checked out leasing the Tesla, okay? And with leasing, it was going to be $520 with zero down. And this was for the standard range, not the long range. We're not getting to technicalities here. That's not what we hear about, okay? We're just here about the thought process, the thought process, the thought process. So $520 a month, right? With zero down to lease, okay? So then we have to also include the insurance. So the insurance was about $300 to $400. And I did several quotes with different um, car insurances. Um, but I always go with worst case scenario when I'm budgeting or planning finances so let's go with 400 so $520 plus $400 so around $820 a month okay um, and in comparison to $640 for the Ford Focus that I was already paying for so that's a $200 difference from a Ford Focus to a Tesla. But one thing about leasing, the reason I didn't lease the Model 3 was because leasing the Model 3, you cannot buy the car after leasing. Like most cars, if you do a leasing situation with a year, two years, three years, whatever, usually after all of the money that you spent or has accrued, accru what's that word? Oh, accrued, whatever the word is, over the years that you have paid for the car. So if it was $500 a month and say you spent $20,000 over a certain amount of period of time, you can subtract that from the value of the car and then you can buy the car at the lease leasing period. Tesla doesn't allow you to do this with Model 3s and this is very rare, but Teslas don't let you do that with leases. So you kind of put yourself back in the position that you were with, with the fair situation, with the Ford Focus. So it didn't really make sense to do this because I'm like, then I'm just paying for a car, all this money for a car that I will never own or can't own. And it's just, it's just a waste of money at this point. So I went away from leasing and I went to um, financing. With financing right now on Tesla, the APR interest is 2.49. That is really good. 2.5, 2.49 is really good. Okay? Because according to Google, the average APR for a car loan for a new car for someone with excellent credit is 4.96 or 5%. The average APR for a car loan for a new car for someone with bad credit is 18.21. 18 girl and Tesla was offering 2.49 APR interest if you don't know what that is that's pretty much if you finance it and you get a big loan that's the amount of interest that you will have to pay on the loan after a period of time but yes 2.49 is a really good deal so Tesla was having that right now and when I bought mine okay another benefit of buying the car rather than leasing the car was that in California you get a two thousand dollar incentive um, there's this new law or this they're just trying to get more people to use electric cars to um, buy electric cars so that you can lower your I mean limit your mm, reduce ooh child I'm tired reduce your carbon um, footprint okay because they're trying to save the environment every state has a different amount 
you I think all states has something but some states is like six hundred and fifty dollars California is two thousand some states I saw it was seventy five hundred but it changes every single year um, but this year is two thousand dollars so if I was to buy a Tesla even if you cashed out and you bought it with cash or you uh, financed it you would get two thousand dollars back from the state that's another benefit. So you can bring down $2,000 from the, the uh, end cost of the car. And then another benefit of buying the car rather than leasing was that with the lease, if something was to happen to me, I don't know, in six months, say I get an accident, say, I don't know, I don't know, I, I can't make YouTube videos anymore. Just say something happens. Um, with the lease, you can't really get out of a lease. You gotta pay a lease. If you wanna be done with this car lease, you gotta turn the car in, but you still gonna pay something, girl. It ain't like that lease just goes away. They're not just gonna rip it up. You still gonna have to pay. That's how a lease works. It's a bonding agreement, girl. Okay, um, but with financing, it, the car is yours. You own the car, but you just have to pay the bank. Say something does happen to me in six months or to you in six months, you can go and sell the car and then make the money back and then pay the bank what you owe them. Um, so it was like I had more flexibility with buying rather than I did a lease. Um, am I scared of commitment? Yes, when it comes to finances. I'm an entrepreneur. I make a different amount every single month, okay? So I am a little bit like, uh, when it comes to like huge long-term commitments with finances. Because I just like to be smart and I like to make sure that I'm spending money that I will have or have already. So, I think I gave it away already, but I got the Tesla Model 3 and I financed it, okay? And it was $49,290 and I financed it for 72 months. Um, and I put zero down, but they gave me a 3.49 APR. Now, just because they tell you, oh, 2.49 APR doesn't mean you'll automatically get that. What they do is they look at your credit and they look at your income and they pretty much just give you a rate based off what makes sense to them. Like, oh, if you have bad credit, they don't trust that you can make them payments, girl. So they're going to really raise their APR. But if you have good credit, then they're probably going to give you the good, a the good um, interest rate. Now, putting zero down and getting a 3.4 APR at 22 is very, rare okay it's very rare for anybody really you have to have really good credit and you have to have the income to back it up now the reason I have good credit I want to do a whole separate video about credit um, but for this the purpose of this video the reason I have good credit is because I started really early I started in high school um, and I let my credit credit is all about age it's all about paying on time it's all about it's a chess game like I said I'm gonna do a video about this but I have excellent credit I think my credit is like 760 or 770 one of those i mean i'm 22 okay so that's a really big deal and i proud myself on that okay and honestly i didn't need to put zero down like i could have put a lot of money down honestly i had the money i really did i had the money for the car it's just it didn't make sense to it doesn't make sense to me to spend that much money on something um when you can have it readily available to you in your account i feel like it only makes sense to make large purchases like that like 40,000 30,000 20,000 like that is when you're rich <laughs> like when you really like you barely will see it come out of your account but if you're gonna see it come out of your account you're like oof or it's gonna really hurt you girl i don't think it's smart to buy a car off the lot just so you won't have loans or you won't have to pay interest because you're gonna need that money for something else whether it's rent eating vacation your birthday whatever it is i think it's better to have that money in your account or put it in the savings and have it build interest over time rather than just giving away fifty thousand dollars even though you have sixty thousand um it's better to have more money available to you because then you can buy more things that can help you make more money like equipment things like that like that goes into a whole nother conversation but i don't really think it's really that smart to even though i had the money to like let all of that money go and like i told you i'm not rich okay the reason i have that much money available um is because i was saving my entire time in college and like i said i was pretending like i had a car and i was putting that money aside and saving it every single month for when i bought a car um and and that's a very long term it's it's really hard i'm not gonna sit here and act like that's something easy and that's something that a lot of people do um but i was in college and i also was like it was easy for me because what was I doing, girl? I was going to class. I was going home. I didn't buy a lot of clothes. I didn't go shopping a lot because it's like, I'm in class, girl. We're in the library at 3 a.m. Why are you trying to look cute? So I didn't really have much things to spend my money on other than YouTube equipment, and that came out of my taxes, girl. So it was just like, I, I, like I had a lot of money to save. I had a full ride, and I was working. So I had time to save. So don't think that like 
you know, that, that, that was just, it made sense for me at the time to save that much money because I knew at some point I'm going to buy a car. At some point I'm going to move to LA. At some point I'm going to be shopping. So let me save this money now instead of doing it now and not needing to do those things now or needing those things now. But back to the loan. So I didn't expect to pay this car off in 72 months, even though I put zero down. The reason I did 72 months for my loan term was because that's how you could get the lowest monthly payment. The 72 months didn't really mean much to me. I really only planned to have the loan for two to three years. And what that means is in two to three years, if I still want the car, like I have the car and I'm not tired of it, it's still nice to me, I love it, then I'm gonna go ahead and just pay off the car. With God's grace, hopefully God, please bless me. And if I don't want it, I'm going to sell it or I'm going to trade it in for another Tesla. So that, that's my thought process. I'm not really planning to pay this car off for 72 months. That doesn't make any sense. So, like I said, the car was about $49,000 um, and I financed it for 72 months, put zero down and my APR is 3.4, right? Um, so my car payment is $760 and my insurance is in the 300s. So it's in the total of about $1,000 a month for this car. And this may seem like a lot because it is a lot. $1,000 a month is a lot, but it's an investment, okay? It's property. It's something I own now. Oh my God, I own a car. Um, and I can afford it, to be honest. That's just the third truth. Um, and I'm sorry that my privilege is showing, but I, I've worked really hard for this privilege, <laughs> okay? And I'm working really hard so that my kids can have that privilege as well and not go through what I went through, which was homelessness and poverty. So yes, I can afford it, so it makes sense for me. But that's that's not really um, the real like takeaway from this, is like I can afford it and maybe you can't, or maybe you can't. I don't know your financial situation. The point of the video is I'm trying to give you an idea of like what that thought process looks like when it comes to like making smart decisions with your money. It's not as simple as like, oh, I want a Tesla and I can um, afford this, so let's do it. Do a lot of research, w weigh your pros and your cons. I mean, I didn't even tell you guys that I get free charging at my building. In my apartment building, there are plugs and I charge my car here for free so I don't have to pay for gas. So that let, that makes me feel good knowing I'm saving like hundreds of thousands of dollars not having to pay for gas when I have charging here in my building. And I'm getting $2,000 back from um, the state so that I can help pay off my monthly payments. So it's like, there were so many benefits with it that it just didn't make sense to not do it, um, especially because I wanted it and because I can afford it. Like I said earlier, when it comes to spending money for me and making long-term decisions, I care about quality, but who's giving me quality with a deal? That's my thought process when it comes to short-term and long-term commitments when it comes to my money for small bills, a phone bill, and a large bill like my Tesla. So I hope that this video was helpful. I really wanna know if it was helpful. Please comment and let me know if you thought it was helpful. Um, and I wanna hear about some other things that y'all guys, you guys wanna talk about when it comes to finances. What are some things that you're struggling with or some things that you wanna learn? Um, and if I don't know, I can probably reach out to a professional and we can do a video together. Um, I really wanna do this consistently, okay? Because I'm 22, a lot of you guys are 16, 17, 18, 22, whatever. I um, mean, it's like at some point you will be an adult as something you may be an adult now you may have to be this independent in, at 17 or 16 I know I did have to be so it's like let's start now let's not wait until we're 30 or 40 let's start now and let's do it early and let's be transparent about it and you know you guys y'all you all gave this to me so it's like I feel it's my responsibility to share with you guys the knowledge um, about all of the decisions that I'm making when it comes to money I want to thank visible again for sponsoring this video um, and allowing me to come here and to speak to you guys um, I am so sorry that the sun went down she was ready to go to sleep um and so am i um but i hope you like my lamp this is my first time seeing my lamp and my uh hue lights on my computer but yes i hope this video was helpful i love you guys i thank you guys for everything um and if you have any questions or any comments or concerns or input just be respectful um and put it in the comments i love all my tabies and have a great day